gon' bargain with it Bobbing in the dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Young Closer Podcast. It's your host, Jacob Hagerman, and as you guys can see, the gentleman to the left and to the right of me are some absolute studs. Gentlemen, would you go ahead and introduce yourselves? What's up, man? My name is Justin Cross. I'm the founder and CEO of Earn It All and a company called Earn Your Booze. Navy veteran, father, husband, and good friend here of Jacob and Adam and the people here at the Elliott Group. Heck yeah, dude. All right. Yeah, what's going on, guys? My name is Adam Jeremiah. Um, I'm the head coach for Earn It All. Um, I am the head results getter for our coaching program. Um, and, uh, you know, like you know, you asked me before this what you should call me, and I said, you didn't call me anything, you just call me results, because that's what say, I get. I was going to call you the VP, and then uh, <laughs> we decided on just call me the janitor, show me the money, call me what you want, but don't call me broke. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, so number one, guys, this this episode, and by the way, where can they find you on Instagram? I'm Justin J. Cross, and we earned it all. I'm at the underscore Adam Nail. And obviously, guys, you can find me at The Real Young Closer. Co-host Ryan is uh, is not here today. He's taking care of some business. But uh, number one, this episode is really special to me because, well, today is Memorial Day. And so, obviously, it's a day about remembering our fallen heroes and people who have given us the opportunity to be able to do what we do today. And not just, you know, be thankful for what we have, but be thankful for the opportunities that of what we can get. Because, obviously, we all know freedom isn't free. And the one thing I love about Earn It All is not only do they train the Elliott Group, they're our, our trainers with physical, with our nutrition, all of those aspects, they take care of it like it's nobody's business. So they do an amazing job with that. And that's why, you know, you see Andy with the results, me with the results that I've been able to get, and a lot of the coaches here. But the thing that's really special about Earn It All is it's a veteran-owned business. And so that gets me fired up, and especially on today, being able to do the podcast this episode today on Memorial Day means everything. And so, number one, boys, I just want to say thank you for your service. Thank you, buddy. Freaking love you guys that. so much. Appreciate that. You know, we, uh, you know, the main thing, and I, I posted this on social media earlier, was, you know, I, I just asked people not to thank me today. I'm I'm alive. I'm thriving. I'm living the life of my dreams. You know, and and we're we're both kicking ass. And you know, we really it's it today is about remembering our brothers and sisters who didn't make it, you know, who aren't here still, whether they, you know, fell overseas or, you know, they got taken out by, you know, their inner demons. Like a lot of us do, you know, 22 a day or whatever it is now. I don't know how many it is now. It's, it's way too much though. So it's, it's, it's one, it's once too many, once too many at all. Absolutely. And and so, you know, one thing that I do want to ask is because I've actually never really had a chance to talk to you guys on like a, a long form content or anything like this, or just, you know, in passing, we're always just having a good time, always just getting after it. But I know that you were Navy. Yep. And you were Army, correct? Marines. Marines. Okay, so yeah. you, careful. Careful now. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a, he's a, if I'm glad I don't have a crayon in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I already ate. So. <laughs> but real quick, so, Just, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Like, kind of walk me through some of, like, your military experience. And then we're going to get into, like, the earn it all, into the mindset and the fitness a little bit after that. Sure. So I graduated high school in 02 and I did not want to do any more schooling. Like that was not for me. I was looking at college trade and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, this is not for me. And, uh, what happened my, in my junior year, nine 11. Right. So I was sitting there in high school watching that. And I remember like I woke up in the morning when it was happening on, cause I had the news on and I still went to school and I woke my dad up. I'm like, are we, do I still go to school? Like, what do we do? Like, what is this? You know? And he, you know, nobody really knew. So we didn't do anything at school that day. We just sat there and just watched and just kept getting worse and worse and worse, you know, more buildings and all this kind of stuff. And right then is where it started to switch over. I was like, you know what? I feel like there's something more than like what I was already planning on doing, which was like college. Right. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm looking at the TV. I was probably like 17 at the time. And I was just like, Dude, I don't know. There's something else here. So I was working at Sam's Club at the time. My buddy comes in and he goes, hey, I'm joining the Navy. And I was like, oh, yeah? And I was like, well, all right. And I went in. Long story short, I joined with him. And uh, so I went in in 02. And I was in from 02 to 06. It was right after 9-11. Did you guys go to basic together? We did. We went. Kidding. Where'd you go to basic at? Uh, Great Lakes, Michigan. Gross. I don't even think it's there anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I, I want to I touch on that because yeah. we don't have to rush. I love the podcast. So I, get to ask, right, cool. I, get, I get to ask these questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. So you're in Great Lakes, Michigan. Yep. What is, what's like the, uh, the pipeline look like for Navy? For like, for boot camp, right? For boot, yeah. 
Yeah, so you get in, you know, you have a squad. We were Division 420, 420, you know. Of course you were. Um, <laughs> of course you was. <laughs> That's a real story, right? <laughs> um, so we get up there, and, you know, we, uh, we basically – in boot camp in general, I think Adam probably backed this up. Like the whole idea is to kind of break down who you were growing up as a kid, because most people are about eighteen then, right? Oh, yeah. And they we need to develop you into someone that's gonna basically kind of conform and that's gonna be able to become a soldier now or a sailor or an airman or whatever, right? So boot camp in a nutshell is basically like erasing your old identity. So it's teaching you new skills. Like in the Navy, we learned a lot of like knots and being organized with, you know, just even just making your bed and clothes, lots and lots of PT, marching and step, you know, you get jobs uh, all through the different, I think it was like three months, different jobs, you know, and you basically start to become who they need you to be, which is essentially, you know, a number in the, in the military at the needs of the military. Right. Mm. So, you know, that whole experience is basically breaking you down, building you back up a certain way, giving you the skills that they need you to have to go forward, to go to your, your next school after boot camp. So I did aviation. I was in a, I did aeronautics. So I worked on fighter jets, my four years that I was in. So they had to start to, get me into that kind of schooling where I had to learn radar, weapons, communication, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, radios, all that kind of shit. So they took me, which is kind of funny because I wanted to go in the Navy because I didn't want to do college. I went into one of the like most, you know, education intensive fucking <laughs> fields that there was. And I was like, man, I tried to avoid college. What's going on? So like my first, I think it was probably like nine them. months of the Navy was all school. And I was like, Pen so it, was that in bitch. Pensacola? Yeah, yeah, Pensacola. A school. <laughs> so, but I'm grateful that I did that because I knew if I went to college and I went to a trade school or whatever, I, I would have just kind of fumbled through it. And I, I don't even know if I would have graduated, maybe, but whatever, you know. But they, when I went in the Navy, you had no choice. You had to get through it. And so I did, and that set me up for what I did for the next even 10 years after the Navy, which is what got me essentially to roundabout way to now be sitting here with you. So I knew that I needed the discipline and I needed that structure in my life to really get me to the next level, and th which is why I joined the military. You know, and I, thankfully it worked out, you and, know. And so how long were you in? I was in for four years. For four years? So you were yeah. four and done. Um, did you ever deploy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you out there on the boats? I was out there on the boat, baby. We did a world cruise in 2005. So I was I had a I was stationed with fighter jets, which you think Navy, he was, at, he was on a boat, he was in the water. No. Most of the time I was stationed, I had an apartment in the middle of the California, in Lemoore, California. If you've ever been to Lemoore, or if you haven't been, don't go. There's this is one there. of those places. There's nothing there. <laughs> I've never been. Keep it that yeah. way. So the way it would work, though, is like we would practice and we'd work on jets. You know, we were always dropping. We were dropping bombs. We were testing them. We were maintaining them. And when it was time to go on the boat, we flew down to San Diego. We got on the USS Carl Vinson. And then from there, we took off. We left San Diego, hit Guam, went all the way around the planet, and spent most of our time over in the Persian Gulf going over there doing operations. For the guys on the ground, like Adam, we would take off from the ship. We'd go fly over, drop a bomb, do a show of force, do whatever was needed, survey, you know, you know, gather intelligence, whatever it was. And then we came back and ended in Virginia and then flew back home to California. So we went all the way around the planet. Dude, it's pretty fun. That's crazy. Dude, okay. we got to swim in the Persian Gulf, which I think is one of the coolest things. Because, like, it was crazy. Like, What's the water like out there? Is it warm? I'm glad you asked that. Because <laughs> when you go around the planet, you get to see... Water, like lots of it, right? You get to see <laughs> oil. You get to see, yeah. You get to see, you know, the clear tropical type water at, at the equator at Guam. You get to see all the different oceans that we went through. And there was something when we entered the Persian Gulf that didn't feel right. It felt dark and it felt like no shit. Not just because we were there to go fight. It, you could see it and feel it in the water, the whole atmosphere, everything. When we entered the Persian Gulf, it just felt kind of fucked up for lack of better terms. And we went in there and we we're like, oh, this is different. This is different from the water in San Diego, in Guam, mm. and everywhere else we had gone so far. Um, and then we got a chance to swim in the water, so of course we did, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, why yeah. not? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. hey, boys, get wet. And it's funny because, like, as you're getting ready, like, you know, you're standing in line. You have to crawl down this big-ass net, off, jump off into the water, and, and uh, the so, boat is anchored. Wait, wait. So, yeah. wait, so you tell me you can't jump off the top? You would die. It's about 100 feet up, yeah, so they would, wouldn't let you do you that. You would die. Yeah. So I've, I've never been close to, like... Like a, I, what would you call it? An aircraft it's carrier? An aircraft carrier. Dude, they're massive. They're about a thousand feet long. Yep. Yeah. And when they're, when they're like in port, when they're up, they're about a hundred feet off the water. Now when we're cruising and everything, it, it does drop down a bit. Why is that? Um, just, you know, just speed and like Drag. they can, they can 
set where they want it, you know, to help get through the, you know, whatever Ballast we're doing. And everything. Yeah. But basically, we jumped in, and uh, as you're getting in, though, like, they have, here's a list of things, literally, in the water that can kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's everything from barracudas, sharks, sea urchins, uh -huh. snakes, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so they had divers in the water. Uh -huh. and uh, it's they certain had, Wait, they brought divers to, like, protect, like, watch you guys? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Even though the ship is anchored, like, you jump off, like, most people don't realize the ocean is not sitting there. It's moving fast. <laughs> this is why, like, when you're shipwrecked or a plane goes down, if you survive and you're floating on a piece of wood or a raft, or whatever you're never just sitting somewhere you are hauling ass across the planet like the wind and the tide and the currents like you move fast so even though the ship was anchored you get in the water you don't really have to swim they positioned it right so like you basically just floated fast to the back of the boat so if someone didn't swim to get back on there were divers there to help you know round your ass up get you back on but then they would also stop the swim at certain times with oh school barracuda hold on hold Shark. everybody sharks you know whatever <laughs> All right, cool. It's clear enough again. Let more people in, in it. So it was a blast. It was one of those things. It's like, you're like, I'm totally doing it. Like I might get eaten, but afterwards I it's mean, like, why not? how many people get to swim in the Persian Gulf in the middle of it? Like you don't see land. You're in the middle of the fucking Persian Gulf. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. I'm out on that. Okay. So <laughs> number one, that that's, that's crazy. Like all the way, I would not yeah, do it. You know, Mexico's I, cool I, and all, but let's go to the Gulf and get yeah. some real adventure. Then. Mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> If you have to read off what can kill me in, like before I jump in the water, I'm not getting in the water. You should probably never go to the ocean ever again. I, then, I'm, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I mean, listen, I hate open water. I, mean, I don't say I hate open water. As long as I'm in a boat. <clears throat> sure. But yeah, the ocean's legit, dude. It's oh, yeah. I, I love the water. It's but crazy. I'm, yeah. I remember the first time I was in Mexico, we did uh, snorkeling, mm -hmm. and a sea lion swam up to me. Cool. At Mock Jesus. Right, right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I went from looking this way, and then I seen this, like, a little shadow figure, and I turned my head, and it had the closing speed of Terrell Owens, and I was out. Probably shit. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a so sea be, pit bull right oh, in your dude. face. Yeah, dude, I was so thankful to be in the water. Where are the teeth? Oh, thank God, there's no teeth. Oh, dude, yeah. I, it was it was horrifying. And then I got out, and I'm just sitting there, like, on the boat, and I'm like, did this really just happen? Yeah. Like, like am like, I still here? Nah. Like, <laughs> And then, like, you just hear him, like, barking. Like, yeah, that right there was terrifying. Right. I'm, I'm I'm, all the way out on that. I never want to deal with Anybody that. Anybody have any tequila? <laughs> I'm done with the water. Yeah. yeah. Guys, no, I'm going to enjoy Mexico the way Mexico is meant to be yeah. enjoyed. Tacos and tequila. Uh, you got it. The two T's. <laughs> the two T's in Mexico. If you forget either one, you didn't, you didn't go to Mexico. So now let's talk about you. Okay. Yeah. So you're Marines. When, like, when did you make the decision? Like, was it something that you were always going to do? Or was it kind of like Adam where there was, like, that 9-11 happened, massive significant event? patriotic yeah, like so, i'm gonna go fight for the rights or is it like from a kid when you're playing like gi joe so honestly for me it was a little bit of both i was a little bit younger than justin when uh when 9 11 happened i remember it vividly i was at school i think it was in middle school maybe yeah i was definitely in middle school i was in science class and we had the tv out right and they put the news on and we watched the whole thing and everything but it wasn't significant enough for me at that point because i wasn't old enough to really understand you know um i had a marine poster on my wall since i was like eight years old so like I always kind of knew I wanted to do that. And then funny story is when I was in high school, our high school uh, counselor, you know, would always tell people from my high school, I was a little tiny high school in the mountains of San Diego. Whenever I tell people I grew up in San Diego, they're like, oh, like they think San Diego, the city, you know, city yeah. boy, all this shit. Yeah, city boy. No, my high school, my graduating class was like 42 people. Out in the mountains, like Dude, I had a town of two thousand in Arkansas, and uh, yeah. my graduating class was a hundred. Yeah, so, so you were smaller, smaller than, that. than that. Yeah, we didn't have a a, a stoplight or a, a Walmart or a you know a Dollar General, anything like that. You know what I mean? But anyway, so um, so I always kind of kind of thought you know military, but our our guidance counselor at my high school um would tell us everybody at the school they say there's only three directions you can go to from this school, you can go in the military, you can go be a cop, or you can go to prison. Right. So it was like, all right, well, I kind of want to go to the military then because I don't I don't want to I don't want to be a sheriff because I thought cop sheriff in our tiny town didn't want to do that. I wanted to get out. You yeah. know, I wanted to escape. So I, I joined the military when I was 17 um, and uh, I was in from 05. How'd you do that? Yeah. So um, forged my mom's signature. Um, she found out about it right before I went to boot camp. U.S. government. That did yeah. not happen. Well, no, you were allowed. You were allowed to join the delayed entry program delayed at seventeen. Program. Yes, but you so also, I mean, you'd... so I forged my mom's signature to allow me into the delayed entry program. Sorry, mom. Get a criminal on the podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, boys. Yeah. We got I just him. need a neck tattoo. <laughs> 
boys. So we got him. Yeah, yeah. Come get him. Get him. Bring yeah. the paddy wagon. Right. So, um, you know, she actually, I, I told her before I left because I had to have her drive me to, you know, Meps to go get, you know, sworn in and all that stuff. So she was pretty pissed off. But uh, but she allowed me to go and, and everything. Go. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. You know, allegedly she may have beat me with the belt. You know, allegedly. but you know, whatever. Allegedly, allegedly. We were, you were allowed to do that back then. Oh so. yeah. Well, I mean, did I remember when I got when my pops used to be like, "All right, go pick your switch." Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Ugh. Yep. But uh, you know, we turned out fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So you know, so I kind of knew a little bit of that. Um, I actually had a, a wrestling scholarship coming out of high school that I could have gone to college for. And I wanted to join the Marine Corps and, you know, cause it was like, I had the poster on my wall. I wanted to be a Marine, wanted to do that. That was like the hardest one or whatever. Yeah. And I had something to prove. And, you know, I had something to prove because I grew up without a father. I grew up without, you know, a father figure. And I was like, I need to prove something. You know, I had something to prove to everybody, everybody, everybody had to prove something to, you know? Oh, yeah. So I went in, um, and, uh, I ended up graduating, you know, at top of my, top of my thing, all that stuff that doesn't matter now that it's like 10, 12 years later, you know? Um, yeah, it matters. and uh, no, it, it's cool, but you know, I, I went in and, uh, my first job that I had when I was in the Marine Corps was actually very similar to Justin's. I worked on Harriers, which is the, um, they don't actually don't exist anymore. Uh, we don't use them. The military doesn't use them anymore, which makes me feel really old. Um, so they're a VTOL aircraft. So yeah. a VSTOL, so a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Um, I've been, you know, overseas a couple times, four times total, twice to let's, Iraq. Let's, 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 slow, yeah. let's slow it down. Yeah, slow it down. I know, because right. he, he's going like, yeah, you yeah. know, twice to Iraq, the deployments. Uh, okay. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why, right? And, and I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I have now been out of the military for longer than I was in the military, and I was in for eight years. So I've been out for over 10 years now. That time of my life almost feels like a different lifetime. Oh, absolutely. I guarantee yeah. So, so it, when I, when I kind of mow through, cause I get asked this a lot, that question a lot, like, Oh, what'd you do in the military? Like, and then whenever I talk to like my veteran friends that I, that I know, or guys that I was in with, they're still talking about that stuff. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, like, yeah, it's a big part of my life, big part of my, you know, my, my young adult life. And I went to a lot of places and everything and it did a lot of stuff, bad shit happened to me, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. But it's almost like, man, I don't even want to hold on to that anymore because it feels like a whole different lifetime ago. No, I remember I'm it not like even, a movie. I'm not even, yeah, it's like yeah. a movie. I'm not even the same yeah. person as I was two years ago. Oh, I'd hope. So it's like, it's crazy. Well, one, one thing I wanted to ask you was, so you worked a lot on the boats. Like you, mm -hmm. you never, you never made it to like actual land, like doing, doing any type of operational work out there on land. Did you? Correct. No, I was, uh, I was on a flight on the flight deck. So we were, we didn't do combat. We were the most dangerous job in the world behind active combat. And I can tell you why when we get a minute, there's all the jets moving around all the time. People get knocked it's over, crazy. like all this. It's crazy, but I loved it. And I think because I have pretty good situational awareness, so like around me and stuff, yeah. like I did well up there and I had a really fun time. You get to see, you know, outside you, instead yeah. of being stuck in an office. If you like but fast I, yeah. paced shit, yeah, it was cool. Go work on a flight deck. But I was not kicking yeah. indoors and stuff like yeah. that in hum Hummers like he was. Because, well, that's what that's what I wanted to, you know, kind of ask you about. Because, like, one thing that I've talked about on the podcast before in the past is remarkable boldness. Mm -hmm. Which is just, I mean, it's just the word in itself that ex explains it. You know, obviously you said, hey, listen, I want to become a Marine. Like, obviously you train to the point, like, where you, you don't even think anymore. But I just want to talk about your first deployment. I don't want to talk about any of the other ones. Because I know that you got lessons from every single one of them. Sure. But that first deployment, you're going out there, and it was one of those deals where, okay, training became reality, mm -hmm. which I always tell people, you know, the Stay on Closer podcast, it's the most important moment when training then becomes into reality. Sure. Like we focus on the reps. We focus on mm -hmm. not getting it wrong. But when the push comes to shove and, you know, and then you kick a door open and the guy's on the other side of it, like that's where the natural instinct of what I've already done has to come into play for you. What was it like in that moment when training became reality? So uh, this is a really great question. I want to give a lot of credit to the Marine Corps and the Recruit Depot because they do so much training. You do so much training throughout basic training, which is 12 weeks, and then you go to combat training, MCT, or, or um, uh, infantry combat training in Camp Pendleton, and that's another eight weeks or something like that. Wow. So when I went to Iraq the first time, it didn't seem any different, really, honestly, than being in Camp Pendleton, California, because the reps are there. 
we went through so many different drills and so many different just combat situations and close quarters combat like training and you know so much stuff that when you get there and honestly like we're so young anyways that it's like i don't know this is just what we're doing yeah you know and then when you're over there it, you kind of get into this mindset of like this is just what we're doing it's just the everyday kind of thing it, you know it goes from like and and because we you put in so many reps in training and because you put in so many you know so much training hours it honestly, I, I, that's a great question to ask. I've never been asked that question before, but especially about my first deployment, because my first deployment was pretty easy. Um, it, it doesn't feel any different, really. And and it's kind of an interesting thing to say, because even, you know, in Afghan Afghanistan was worse than Iraq, bar none, from where I was. Yeah, I was in Al-Assad in Iraq both times, and it was basically, we called it Camp Cupcake. There's a fucking KFC on there, right? So Iraq was a lot different than Afghanistan. Afghanistan is probably the number two worst place I've ever been in my life only because not the people, not the, you know, but the mission that we were doing when we were there wasn't what I signed up for the military for. So, and this is going to get real, real, real quick, you know, but we were there and we were basically mercenaries there. You know, we were guarding a mine and we're guarding a lithium mine for a company called Halliburton. So like, when I found that out, that was one of the reasons why I got out of the military was because of that. It's like we're guarding a lithium mine there and we're getting suicide bombed almost on a daily basis. We're getting mortar attacked almost on a daily basis. And one of the reasons why is because the insurgency, right? They're like, you guys are here stealing our natural resources. So it's like it kind of puts things into perspective where it's like, man, what were we actually doing there? There was no... There were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. That's proven. There's no, like, ISIS wasn't in Afghanistan before we went there. That was Gaddafi. We turned, we turned the Afghanis into insurgents and into, you know, um, like terrorists, basically, because we went into their country for a reason that we should not have been there. And that's strictly based off of what I saw when I was there. Yeah. So, you know, the, the worst place I've ever been was I was in Somalia for about 15 minutes, and that's absolutely the worst place I've ever been. Um, but, uh, but yeah, honestly, it, it's, you know, back to your question, it, it doesn't really feel much different than training because we train so much. We train with live rounds, you know, that we train with live explosions and stuff all the time. So it's like, it wasn't really that much different. It just became second nature to, it's just me and you out there, right? It's not the mission. It's not, you know, the, what the task of the day or anything. It's just whoever's next to me, whoever's in the foxhole with me, that's who it's about. So, so kind of, I mean, if that answers your question, I don't, you know, it kind of, it's just, it's just feels like training again. And it almost feels surreal, especially looking back on it now where it's like, wow, like I, I was, I was there for that, you know, especially now that there's no war going on. It's like, man, I was there for that. Yeah. I don't even, you know? I don't even want to talk about the, the exit. Uh, yeah. Let's, 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 dude, let's, let, let's not get that was on purpose. Yeah. That was a hundred percent on purpose. Let's, we never should have left that air base. <laughs> The, the yeah. way that was done was absolutely, yeah. absolutely shameful. Yeah. You know, the way that, the way that that whole entire situation played itself out. I mean, yeah, yeah, that, that that was shameful. I remember I remember watching it unfold, and I was like, "What in the world?" I yeah, mean, what billions of dollars of military Dude, equipment that was still it was it was past the point of being, you know, complacent, and you, you can't say that they were just they just didn't know it was going to happen. I think it was extreme negligence. Yeah, I I can't even say it was negligence. I think it was on purpose. To be honest with you, you know, Crazy. I'm just being honest. I think it was on purpose because there's no, there's no way that the highest levels of government are that dumb. They could be though, but I sure hope not. They knew it was going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, with them taking it back over uh, Kabul. Yeah, they knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or Kabul? How do you say Kabul? Or Kabul. 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 Okay. Yeah, we never should have left Kabul. No, absolutely not. Craziness. But I digress. So, number one, I really do appreciate you answering that question because, you know, I know that this is going to, like, that's an extreme scenario where, like, you're kicking indoors, you're riding around in Humvees, like, you can get shot, killed, be bad, anything like that could pop yeah. out at any moment. I got and, a piece of shrapnel in my back still from that. Exactly. So. And, like, it's one of those deals where, you know, for you to hear, from, or for me to hear that you're like, hey, listen, even in the worst of situations that we purposely put ourselves in, if you train enough, it's just like training day. Like, it, it, it's just, it's another day. It's a Thursday. Yeah. It's another Thursday, which is crazy for me to understand. But, like, also, now that you guys are rolling into business, it's like, if I do the exact level of training, no matter the hardest of adversities that could face my business, 
It's like the training. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, go ahead. If you can train for that, for combat on the other side of the planet, if you can train for that to a level to where it feels like something you've done before, don't you think you can train to be a master at your business, at closing or at anything? Like, of course, yeah. it's infinitely easier to apply training, like from you, from Andy, from like in business. Like, dude, again, if you can train for something like that, of course you can train to be a master of business. Because I'm going to say, y'all played in sandboxes. I'm not trying to play in. I, w- I would honestly <laughs> say, and, and this might be just my, you know, based off like neuroscience and stuff, because I, I studied a lot of that stuff after I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, I think it's easier to learn in an extreme situation. Oh, absolutely. And, and because absolutely. You, you have the, the brain chemistry going, you have the, the six neurochemicals that are released during flow state, right? And basically the entire time you're deployed in a combat zone, you're in flow state. So, which is that heightened state of awareness where your brain operates faster, your muscles fire faster, you're using more, you know, you're using more overall energy. Like, you know, all these things are happening and you're constantly in that state. So I I know you've been in flow state before. So think about that for nine months straight, just being in flow for nine months. And then think about the, the heightened state of awareness you're in. Once you step back and come back to the United States, because it doesn't really drop really? because you stay there. And now you, now you stay in this heightened state and that's why they call it hypervigilance. When you get out and you go to through all the stupid stuff, you have to go to the VA and they tell you that you have PTSD and all this shit. It's like, no, I just, I am hypervigilant because I was in this state for so long that that's just how I operate now. You know, it's just, it just, I don't know. And I, maybe my opinion on this is different, but you know, Post-traumatic stress is your, this, and this is my opinion, I wrote a paper on this before, post-traumatic stress is your body trying to figure out why you thought a traumatic experience was pleasurable. Because your brain views it as pleasure. When something happens like that, because of the brain chemistry that happens during a traumatic experience, it's the same brain chemistry as if like you're having sex. The same chemicals are going. So your brain thinks of these traumatic experiences as something that was pleasurable. So that's how I, you know, quote unquote, cured, I guess, my my personal like post-traumatic stress. I mean, I had, you know, the nightmares and just the, the, the manic episodes and stuff like that. I've had all that stuff before. And a lot of it was before, you know, um, before I kind of found myself and, and everything, before I got into personal development, I was, you know, I was drinking way too much and I was doing all these things I shouldn't have been doing. I was partying way too much uh, when I was working in the oil field after I got out of the Marine Corps. And we can talk about that, too. But I, I, I seen your um, post. But, uh, you know, I was, I was partying way too much and I, I would have these manic episodes of, you know, I'd wake up sweating and, you know, whatever. And, and it's like, once I realized that PTSD that I was, you know, that I was kind of experiencing was just my brain couldn't understand that that was a pleasurable experience for my brain. And once I connected the two things, all that stuff stopped. And I personally, after that, I helped, you know, a handful of veterans with that. i brought them through the entire thing. I was like, Hey, you have to understand that your brain thinks that everything that you saw and everything that, that happened to you was pleasurable. So as soon as you make that connection, you say, Oh, I know it wasn't pleasurable, but my brain just thinks it was all that, all that shit goes away, you know? So, and I know for a lot of guys, it's not as easy as that, especially now that they're on the medications and, and whatever, but, but yeah, dude, that's it's just a mindset. Absolutely. Yeah. Adam hit something there because, like, training is great, right? Like, you should train to be a master, but there's some things that cannot be replaced by training, which is just jumping into the fire sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, there has to come a, a point in everyone's business or personal life or whatever where you realize, all right, I'm never going to be more ready than I am now, and I just need to go do it. I need to understand that I'm probably going to suck at it. I'm not exactly going to know how to apply what I've been training on, what I've been learning, but I'm just going to get in the fire and figure it out. A lot of people don't get to that point. They they strategize, they plan, they train, they overanalyze, and they never get in to actually doing what it is that they're training for. Yeah, we, you know? we, we call that paralysis by analysis when they're, when they're trying to make sure that everything is perfect. So That's why the Marine Corps uses live rounds in training. Or they used to. I don't know if they do anymore. You know, it's kind of a softer Marine Corps now, but, you know, that's why we use live live rounds in training because there's a huge difference between, you know, when you're, when you're crawling underneath the, the fucking razor wire and there's, you know, blanks going off. And when you're crawling underneath the razor wire in the mud and you're, you can't breathe and there's live rounds going off over you, there's a huge difference. Oh, absolutely. So it's like, if, that, that's why we always say, you know, we train the way we fight. So, yeah, that's, that's freaking crazy, dude. Oh, my goodness. So, here's what I want to say. 
So you started Earn It All. Mm -hmm. Okay, you founded it. When did you, when did you find it? Or not find it, but like when did it become a thing? Like, It first started as Earn Your Booze in 2017. Okay. So I was based, essentially living a lifestyle that started for me in the Navy. I had to be in good shape. And a sailor is also known for what? Cussing and drinking, right? Yeah. So like, like a fish. Yeah, so we were doing that. We'd go to all these different ports. You know, we hit Greece, Guam, Dubai, you know, Singapore, all these cool places around the planet. And, of course, we turned it up. We, we went out there and had a good time, right? Just activated. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where it started in, in my mind for me. I was like, well, this is what I do. I work my ass off in the gym and at my job so I can go out and eat, you know, countless plates of pasta and just have all the beers I want. And like, that's kind of where the mentality came from. Then in 2017, I was like, you know what? I was already working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? And I was like, if I made this a business, I could impact and reach a hell of a lot more people. Oh, yeah. So in 2017, I launched it as Earn Your Booze and right off, right off the bat, like it, it, Worked, I think, because it was so weird, right? Yeah. Really? Fitness and, and drinking? Partying and drinking? Like, what? <laughs> but um, that's what landed us in Men's Health Magazine and Liquor.com and Chilled Magazine. And we had the COO of casinos reaching out to us to do events in Vegas. And, like, all the, like it just kind of took off. So then it was just uh, a little over a year ago when I was like, you know what? This needs to expand beyond just the hospitality, entertainment, and the drinking niche, right? We still do that, but I was like, there's a hell of a lot more people out there that don't drink, and we, we just have a whole broader mission, right? So that's when Adam moved out here from Vegas and jumped in with me full-time for Earn It All Academy. How'd you guys meet? Yeah, we actually, um, social. this is a good story too, you know? Um, Justin and I actually met on social media. I was, uh, I was sober at the time. Um, I was sober for two years because so I was who slid in whose DMs. Yeah, um, I think I slid into Justin's DMs. I think, I think I bought some merch first. You know what I, mean? I, I, I just had a crazy. Yeah. I, I bought joke. some merch I first. Joke. Yeah. Like, That's what's know. up. <laughs> yeah, I bought him dinner first. You know what I mean. Hey, hey, no, so, uh, right. so hey, no, I was I was sober. So I was sober for two years. Yeah. You know, I had I had a problem with alcohol uh, previously, and I did it for myself because I didn't know what else to do. Right, I was drinking a bottle, bottle and a half a night just to go to sleep. You know? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. So I knew in the back of my head, though, because I, I had gone to a couple AA meetings and stuff, and I knew in the back of my head that I was like, I don't identify with this, though. Like, I don't understand identifying with, with something for that long, right? And it wasn't until I went to this AA meeting, and this guy was there. His name was Joe, and he was getting a 30-year coin, right? And if you've ever been to VA, the, uh, to VA, AA, you get a coin for every, like, decade or whatever you're sober, and he'd been sober for 30 years. And I, I asked him afterwards, you know, because he got up there, he did the thing. He's like, hey, guys, my name's Joe, and I'm an alcoholic. You know, getting his 30-year coin. Super awesome to see it. You know, it was great. Talked to him afterwards. And I was like, hey, man, like, you still identify as being an alcoholic? So how long were you an alcoholic? He's 15 years. I said, so you've been sober for twice as long as you were an alcoholic, and you still identify as one. I had a big problem with that because I don't like identifying with shit that isn't good for me. Exactly. You know, I don't like I when I identify with something, I give it power. You know what I mean? So I feel like and I know AA has helped a lot of people, but it wasn't the thing for me. And I saw a, I don't know if I saw an ad maybe for for merch or if I just happened to cross earn your booze somehow. I saw that and I was like, hmm, that sounds like something I could do. You know, I was like, I don't feel like I have I don't feel like if I go out and have an old fashioned on Friday that my life's going to fall apart, that. I'm going to fucking beat my wife and I'm going to like all these things are going to happen if I just go out and have an old fashioned. So I did it after I saw Justin's post or, or earn your booze or whatever it was. And I went out and I had an old fashioned after a really hard week of work and you know, whatever I was just like, I was feeling like I could, like I kind of earned it. Right. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. I went and had an old fashioned. I went home. Nothing fell apart in my life. My, my life actually got exponentially better after that like moment that like, when you change your you relationship know, with I change I changed my relationship with it and you know and it's it's so interesting because it changed my relationship with a lot of things after seeing that post from Earn Your Booze where it was like it solidified the I don't give things power by identifying with them. You know, I only identify with shit that's good for me. You know, I only identify with things that are that are badass in my life. I don't identify with negative shit. I don't identify with things that are a low frequency, you know. I just don't do it. And that has completely changed my perspective on drinking and, you know, recreational like marijuana use and things like that. It's like, and I don't even, I'm like, I don't even drink all that often. 
you know, and I don't do drugs and I don't, you know, I, I did a lot of that shit in my, in my younger days, you know, and, and but like, I don't even drink that often, but when I do, it's not a problem. It's like, oh, I have a couple drinks. Cool. Doesn't ruin my business. Doesn't do anything. It's just like, no, because I know what I need to do in order to earn that. So, so we kind of met, you know, through social media in that way. And I bought some merch and I was doing strongman at the time still, or, or trying to, cause this was like right at the end of, uh, like right before COVID started, I think. He was about that, that, that time right before Probably. COVID. And, um, you know, I was, I was just trying to do my, my strongman comeback cause I did that for a couple of years at the national level. So, you know, um, I was just, we were just talking back and forth and he was going to sponsor me as an athlete. And, uh, we ended up meeting in Vegas at an event for the NFL and we kind of just had a couple drinks and started talking about business and shit. And it kind of just went from there. No, so man. two months later I moved, I moved here. So I quit everything, sold all my shit in Vegas, and moved here. Dude, that's what's up. So, dude, know. that's that's an example of what can happen on social media if you use it the right way. Oh, Absolutely, you know, don't just consume and just be out there trying to do, you know, whatever. Like, be on there looking for people, looking for brands, looking for opportunities that you that resonate with you, that you can add value to, that you potentially can, you know be a part of right like him he saw it and at first it was a personal thing he's like yo i can earn this old-fashioned and i don't have to keep going to aa and like mm -hmm. and then, then it turned into like oh what else is going on who's behind this like mm -hmm. all these different things you know started to come just because of social media and now here we are today in scottsdale he didn't live here before that you know when he found that and um and now the brand has evolved from earn your booze to earn it all and we've partnered with you and andy and like it's just a whole thing has come about because he was intentional with what he was doing on social media. Dude, I love it. One, one thing that I wanted, I got a couple of questions about Earn It All. So mm -hmm. obviously the mission with Earn It All is to be able to earn all the things in life that you truly want. Let yeah. it be alcohol, let it be, you know, anything. Earn the body that you want, earn the <laughs> mm -hmm. mindset that you want, be able to truly earn it. Like now it's become down to like fitness, you know, you know, fitness, finance, you know, like food, every aspect of your life. Health, wealth. Victory, which is your mindset. You have to have a victorious mindset and respect, which is your family or your relationships, your network, your net worth. You know, all those things go into those four and those four pillars, because if you're missing one of those pillars, your life is going to suck. Oh, absolutely. You could be as rich as you want and your family life sucks, or you could have a great family and all this stuff, but you can't give them the life that they deserve, you know? So it's about earning all of that stuff. Yeah, it, it's know? about getting past being one dimensional. Absolutely. Being, being multidimensional. Absolutely. And so... You guys been in business for uh, how long with since COVID? About two and a half years, three years. You've been with us. So, so I've been hundred percent all in for ten months this month. I, I believe it's been ten months. Stop. Yeah. And dude, you guys are scaling like nobody's business. I'm freaking. It fires me up to see you dude, guys scaling. This is this is what I tell people. I'm like, look, look what when people ask me about business and stuff, and it's like it might seem like it's going slow to me, you know, but it's like. When you, when you scale out and you're like, you take the 40,000 foot view of it, it's like, you guys did all this in 10 months. I said, guess what we're going to do in 10 years, motherfucker. Exactly. Like, look, wait for 10 years Dude, from I, now. I, I remember when you, I'm, I got a chance to meet you guys and uh, really I was just like, okay, so who are these guys? And then I remember, you know, Andy was like, hey, this guy who spoke on Sean Whalen's stage is coming by the house for 4th of July. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, you came by, you brought some, you know, some gear over and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, yeah, that dude looks pretty cool. I didn't get a chance to have a conversation with you at that moment. Sure. And I was like, Andy, so who is he? And he goes, I don't know, but we're going to figure it out. And then next thing you know, like you came down to the lion's den and then I got a chance to meet you. And then it transpired from just kind of being like friends off to the side to then you're coming to the office more often. And then we did the 9-11 run together. And then now it's like we're all in business together. Like you guys are here at the lion's den. You know, you're training us in the gym downstairs. And it, it, it just how fast the relationship transpired and how it's like growing. I want to ask you guys because I'm, I'm a big I'm a big planner myself when it comes to business like mm -hmm. i like to find the i like to find the goal then back myself into it like what's it going to take to get to it mm -hmm. what's next for earn it all it's a good question so one of the things i talked about at at uh, lion's den live last year was making a great plan knowing where you're going to go you know what's going to set you apart from everyone else what your niche is how you're going to do better than everyone else something like that make that plan but be ready to throw that plan in the trash 
because things rarely go according to plan in yeah, business. All, what, right? is it, what does it say? All plans are good to the first round of shots. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Then you got to yeah. go to yep. the backup plan. <laughs> but but the point is like knowing where you want to go, and then just figuring out how to get there, right? So what Earn It All is becoming, and what it is now, is we are the elite fitness mindset health brand for entrepreneurs and business professionals such as yourself. People that typically focus on making money that put themselves maybe second, third, or even last, right? Which is something I've, I've had to struggle with or deal with my whole entrepreneur journey for the past seven years too, because especially when, or when you're an entrepreneur, everything is riding on you. Like literally everything, right? Like everything from the little tiny details from just paying the bills and posting on social media, you know, doing your trademark, stuff like that, to also just, you know, figuring out problems, figuring out how you're going to solve these things, how to grow the brand. So that world, I understand very well, is always, for the most part, focused on supporting the business, making money, make sure we're growing, but it's easy to put our health last. So we are here to say, Hey, look, you can still earn everything you want to in the bank account and in your business and all of that. But the best way, and really the only way you're going to be able to do that and sustain that long term, is to have a strong, healthy body in mind. So that's what we help you build, right? So I know you're focused on growing everything, your personal brand, your business with the Elliott group, the young closers, all that kind of stuff. Biceps. But yeah, Yo. like it's fun to look the way you do and all that. Like I get it. Like oh, it's yeah. great. But what you're also doing is you're setting yourself up to be able to keep going at it for the long term. Because yeah, no business wants to be a flash in the pan. No body wants to be quick, you know, and quickly in shape because you did a challenge or something. So we need to treat our bodies and our minds like we do our business, like mm -hmm. set them up for the long term. So earn it all is now the fitness arm of the Elliott group. We do workouts for every single seminar out here in Scottsdale, right? We now travel with you guys and we go out there and we basically are spreading the message of, yes, you can focus on your business, but you can also focus on your, on your body. And when you actually take care of you first, your business does better. Imagine oh. that. Yeah. Dude, no, I, I mean, I'm a hundred percent a testament of that. When I first yeah. joined Andy, I was 117 pounds. Now I'm sitting at a nice 185. And uh, dude, there's a difference when I used to walk in a room a year and a half ago, two years ago. Yeah. Versus when I walk in a room now, the first thing, totally. you know, first thing when people walked in, they'd be like, who the hell is this guy? Now, when I walk in a room, whether I'm in a suit or if I'm in a polo, mm -hmm. they're like, dude, you, Hit the gym, yeah. and I'm like, hell it's yeah, the difference the between walking into a room and showing up to the room. Exactly. It's yeah. like, oh, as as Wes Watson says, like, oh, yeah. you walk in the room, like, oh, there you are. Yeah, oh, there but, you are. But yeah. in reality, here, it's here I am, here motherfucker. I am. Yeah, here I yep. am. Yep. You know, and as as right. I, I love when Brad Lee says it as well. It's like, hey, have you ever missed a really good party? Have you? No. Yeah, me neither. Because it wasn't that good of a party. <laughs> right. if I wasn't there. If I wasn't there, it couldn't. If have I wasn't been that there, great. it couldn't have been that good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, most people think that it takes an immense amount of sacrifice it takes eating boring ass like bullshit food yeah i can't do that. that it takes you know it takes giving up all the things that you like to do and or, or it takes giving up your business or giving up your family or something like that in order to get into elite shape and keep yourself in elite shape but it doesn't you know that it doesn't take all that stuff you know it's kind of a farce that's been fed to us by you know, men's health magazine or the bullshit uh, that you see on the internet. Dude, the internet's so full of influencers and there's not enough experts. Because if you start working with an expert, somebody who knows physiology, somebody who knows nutrition, somebody who knows anatomy, somebody who knows how, you know, the body works and listens to you when you say, hey, here's my business. This is what I want to do. This is how it is. You know, when you do that, like, dude, the results are just a byproduct of the inputs. Yeah. Right? It's just input output. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. And, and man, we're, we're like, the results are absolutely insane. Once you get out of your own way and you say, okay, I'm going to leave this to the experts. Yeah. So what we have done with earn it all is we have essentially developed Andy Elliott's fitness plan. Right. So when I first came here, I came to a seminar to meet him. Right. I was sat in the back and I was like, I was watching the TVs weren't even up on the wall yet. It was still the whiteboard. Right. And I was sitting there for a minute. I met Ryan, Chris, I think you, um, you know, everyone's super cool, obviously. And I'm sitting there and I came to a sales seminar, but within a few minutes, I was like, dude, this guy's talking more about family and fitness than he is sales. And like, I love it. This is great. You know? So I'm just taking it in. I'm listening and he gets off stage and I think Sean or somebody went up to talk. So we went out back and uh, right off the bat, what were we talking about? 
fitness, our yeah. wives, our kids, yep. you know, what our, you know, what we think about life and all this kind of stuff. And right off the bat, I was like, dude, this is, this is my guy. So I started to pay more attention started to listen closely. And, and again, he was talking just as much about being in shape, taking you know, control of your life, having personal responsibility as much as he was about closing and objections and all that kind of stuff. But there wasn't a, okay, get in shape, and here's how to do it. It was go figure it out, right? And I was like, dude, this guy deserves to have an expert-driven, phenomenal fitness plan that people can jump on because they believe him. They trust Andy. They trust guys like you, all the coaches here, right? And if you tell them they need to get their asses in shape, they're going to do it. And like he was just saying, what most people do is they what? They Google. They go out there and they find something that's BS or they hire an influencer. They get a cookie cutter plan. They don't get held accountable. They don't get the results they want. They get frustrated. And before you know it, 10 years have gone by. They have not gotten in shape. So we said we need to build something that is at the level of Elliot Group and Andy and where they're going. So that's what we've built with Earn It All. So now when you come in to train with us, you're not just tra- you're not just like working out with us. You're training. You're getting programming, you're training, and you're getting results that you're going to be able to keep on the long term, just like he is helping you get with your business. Between myself and Justin and and our other, you know, our other contributors to, you know, the program, we have probably two decades worth of experience in training, personal training, coaching, nutrition, physiology, like, so over two decades of, you know, if you put it all together, of of all this stuff and the method is sound all we did was plug the method into you know this program and it's like Mm -hmm. listen just follow the program you know that's it so guys i got a question if there's anybody watching this right now they're like you know what my mind my body my health you know my my victories they're not in order how can they get a hold of you guys text earn to 602-900-8703 all right, I'm gonna have you say that one more time, but say it a little bit slower yeah. because these guys gotta be taking some. Yeah, they gotta yeah. write that down. Write yeah, that down. We'll, maybe we'll throw it up on the video. Oh, no, text, we will. text earn. I'll tell Aiden to throw it up on the video. Yeah, text earn to six zero two nine hundred eighty seven zero three. And so hey, listen, it's it's just like that. So listen, the reason why I wanted to do this podcast is number one, like we've been wanting to do it for a minute, just be able to find time. I've been on the road like crazy. It's and you've been, been all over the world, yeah, man. It's been insanity, man. Yeah. But uh, today I was like, you know what? I know I've got about three, 3.4 trillion things to do that I, I should be getting done right now. But I was like, dude, there's no better day than today. Than to just spend a moment, be able to talk with you guys, talk about, you know, what you've been through in the past, which I'm, I'm super grateful. And as you said, you're like, hey, listen, I made it out. At the end of the day, we still owe that gratitude because, well, you know what? You did eight years of it. And so that's, you know, eight years ago for me, I was like, 14. Man, I'm fucking getting old. <laughs> uh, when, when you guys This talk, is getting better. Yeah. I mean, I was born in 2000, so. Wow. Sick. Wow. <laughs> Hell, yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's cool, though, because that's something, you know, just real quick. I know you're, you're trying to wrap it up here, but no, dude, something I realized was you have a lot to look forward to because as, as I go through the years, and I'm sure Justin can attest to this, too, you know, I'm 35 this year and I have continued to get better. And, mm-hmm. and even when I wasn't trying, oh yeah, like even when as we as dude, as men, dude, we get better looking as we age. We should be getting better in all areas. Dude, as we I'm age, man. Set, set. I know you're. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Just wait till so, I'm 30. Yeah. So oh. it's, you know, it's, you, you got a lot to look forward to Jacob. You're, you're kicking ass, man. And I'm, that. I'm dude, I'm stoked to watch the, watch the, you know, the transformation of you, and tra- what transpires over the years, and see where you go with everything, man. I'm fucking humbled to be a part of it too. Dude, I'm I'm, I'm excited yeah. to be even on the journey in the first place. What I tell people is, uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, you guys, you know, you, know, you guys are on fire." I'm like, "Dude, we haven't even warmed it up. <laughs> like, we're not even warmed up yet. I haven't even put the water in the in the kettle to boil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we haven't even started. Yep. But no, guys, I, I really appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day. You know, talking to everybody on the Young Closer podcast. You know, really just be able to tackle one of the biggest holes in most people's game, which is that, that strong body. Yeah. Which Fitness is the gateway to your most elite self. It a hundred percent is. It, it's the absolute necessity to be able to become the most elite version of yourself because I've never once walked into a room here and been like, man, I, I don't feel good. Like, yeah. It's not because of the skill. It's because do I feel good? Mm-hmm. And if I feel good and I feel like I'm like, I'm that guy that I'm going to walk into it and I'm gonna give everything that I've got. And, uh, 
I think it's super important that everybody who's listening really hones in on the message from guys who've been all across the country, have done a lot of things that have sucked in life, but still have been able to find other ways to impact and serve and really take care of other people just like you were in the military, which is I, I, the, the reason I love it is because it reminds me of the military, the way that like Andy runs and all yeah. of that. Like if, if I ever watch a war movie, I'm like, that would be Andy. You know, just just they're mm-hmm. going crazy all the time. But to see how you guys have been able to impact others and really, you know, inspire thousands of people, thousands of people to really go out there and, and go get more. Like just a couple of names like Tony, like, you know, mm-hmm. Tony G, baby. Mm-hmm. Tony I mean, G. Look, look, look at him, dude. I Tony mean, you, G. you gave him Tony. an extra, you gave him an extra 15, 20 years on his life. Absolutely. And he's just getting started. Jacob, Absolutely. let me tell that, like, it's called young closers, right? So you young guys out there, let's say you're 20, you're like Jacob's age, right? Most guys wait until they have a health scare or a health mm-hmm. issue when they're maybe in their 30s, even 40s, 50s. And then they go, oh, shit, I need to stop being a fat ass or I need to stop living this unhealthy way because I know that it's going to lead me to an early grave. Most people wait for it, right? Mm-hmm. So for you guys out there now that are listening to this and following Jacob. The young closers. The young closers out there. Like, you guys take your health seriously now like he is. Dude, you're going to set yourself up just for a, a lifetime of success. And you're not going to have to have that health scare when you're 50 because you're way over overweight or you've been so unhealthy that your your body is literally trying to shut down because it doesn't know what to do anymore 100%. right yep. so you guys i know it's it's hard now because like if you're 22 and you have a six pack and you're lean and you know you're handsome and all the girls like you and all that <laughs> stuff like you here's my advice for you I think he was talking about me. Train, <laughs> train for capabilities okay don't train to look a certain way start to train and you'll see what I mean. Like, just shoot us a DM or something. There's a different way to train than just, like, doing arm day and back day and leg day and stuff. If you guys can take your health seriously now and train to be capable, train your full CNS, your central nervous system, to really get in alignment with itself, you're going to set yourself up for a lifetime of just pain-free. This, you're still going to look good, but don't wait for a health scare later on in life. Yeah, you'll absolutely. be in shape forever, and absolutely. that's going to carry There's over. There's a perfect the example of this, too. We uh, we do corporate wellness training as well. We had a solar team out here, um, what, a couple weeks ago? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just, just so happens today's Memorial Day, we were in a MRF with them. And, you know, these guys are all between 22 and 28 years old, no, something like, like that. 19 to or 21. 19 to 21. Yeah, Sorry, they were super young. Yeah, I know that was this was uh clean skies. Oh, clean skies. It's yeah, clean, clean skies. skies. Yeah. yeah, those cats are young. And they were young. Everyone's in great shape, six packs and everything. And and we ran a Murph. Justin and I ran ran it in our in our vests and our forty pound vests. I'm thirty five. Justin's gonna be forty this year. And we smoked these kids. And I'm like, you're nineteen years old. Like we had some we had kids crying, literally crying in tears on the ground, wanting to quit. And I was like, this is the easiest thing you're ever gonna do in your life. This is a little workout. Like, how are you so soft? And this isn't, you know, to put anybody down, but it's like, listen, man, like you're 19 years old and you're wanting to give up on a workout that your company paid for to build you up as a team. And this is, and this is how, this is how the young guys are, you know, not all of them, obviously, you know, but it's yeah, like, man, yeah, you're good. You, hey, listen, I, I grew up in the South, so yeah, you yeah, no, you're, you're don't cut have to from spare, a different cloth. Don't have to Jacob. spare no yeah. feelings. No, you're cut from a different cloth, you know, but, but it's just an example, just like Justin was saying, guys, you got to looking good's great. Your body is going to look as good as you train though. So if you train for capability, if you train to be, you know, a beast, you're going to look like a beast too. That's just oh, yeah. the way it is. And th- there's two things I wanted to say was, you know, I remember Andy, when I first uh, started here, he goes, Hey, listen, you want to go further, faster for longer. Mm-hmm. That's where that's why you're going to train hard. And then the second thing is he told me because we're in the gym and he goes, Jacob, you know, what's the most sad thing that you can be as a man, be capable, but not. Yeah. He goes, he goes, there's people that wake up in wheelchairs. There are people that won't wake up. There's people that literally right, have yeah. mental problems, like that have yeah. health problems, that people have literally lost a leg, yep. people that have had, you know, type 2 diabetes, and they can't go hit the gym like we can. He goes, but imagine being capable, yeah, but not. I tell right. people all the time in our coaching, on our coaching calls, you know, sometimes we got to give them tough love. I'm like, listen, how dare you take for granted this gift that you've been given? You know, these guys are in their 30s and their 40s maybe, and they're wasting their God-given gifts of being capable and being, you know, elite and being the the type of man that their family deserves or being the, you know, the brother, sister, husband, father, whatever, right? How dare you waste this gift, you know? And it's like, 
maybe it's just you don't know how to get there. And listen, we'll show you the way, but don't waste it because we only get one life, you know, and I intend to live a very, very long time, very, very in shape, very, very healthy. And I, you know, I can't wait till I'm 50, 60, 70 years old, still running circles around, you know, the kids that don't listen. Heck yeah. So, So, hey, listen, don't be one of the guys that aren't listening. His text better be flooded. (laughs) Drop the number again. 602-900-8703. And text. Earn. Earn. All caps. Earn. That's right. Okay. So, hey, you now have an action plan. There's been a moment in your life where it goes from unconscious incompetence, which means you don't know what you don't know, but now that you listen to the end of the podcast, what we're going to call it is just pure negligence, okay? Now you know the answer, but you didn't do anything with it. So if you don't get what you want, it's not because we didn't show up and give it the message. It's because you didn't commit. But once you commit, these guys didn't get into business to watch you fail, and that's why they're Elliot Group certified. That's why they're the ones who are training Andy, myself, and all the guys here who are crushing it in all areas of life. So the deal is there's a lot of trust in, you know, Adam and in Justin to go deliver to every single one of you guys. So if you're watching this and you look down for just a split second and you go, I'm not, I, don't, I don't like what I see, text that number. And I promise you they're going to have something for you for you to start making the changes today. Because yep. don't wait for something bad to happen for you to try to do what's right. Just do it now. So, Justin. That's right. Thank you, brother. You, brother. Yes, sir. Adam, appreciate you, man. Thank you, sir. Hey, everybody, keep crushing it. Keep killing it. Young Closer Podcast. Roll the credits. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the 4-5 on the west side.